no one bet on Makoto Shinkai. Far from an underdog, his work had enjoyed relative success and garnered awards and recognition in the years he had been making movies. His beautiful, detail-oriented style stood out amongst his peers. He had been earmarked as a director to watch, for sure, but I don't think anyone really saw it coming. 2016's Your Name, that is, and the watershed moment for anime that it represented. Your Name opened a door to the medium that was usually reserved for only the most universal of Ghibli titles, and plenty of would-be fans took the opportunity to walk through it. It's not often that the intimidating and strange walls to our fandom come down. Even in Japan, where the art form is ubiquitous, the consumption of anime isn't. But if only for a beat, Your Name changed all that. It became, for a while, the highest grossing anime movie ever made. Its success brought its creator unwanted comparisons to industry giants, the heavy responsibilities of which seemed understandably upsetting to Shinkai. Across the world, people were falling for his latest picture. But to reduce Shinkai to a single feature is to misunderstand one of the industry's most interesting directors. In my debut video on the channel, I said that his portfolio is one that speaks of evolution, of growth, and of an imperfect voice that is always striving to better itself. Makoto Shinkai is a masterfully flawed director, whose shortcomings are just as interesting and telling as his wild successes, and I can't shake the feeling that his legacy is only just beginning to be written. But one thing's for sure, going forwards, everyone's betting on Shinkai. During the late 90s, Shinkai was employed at video game company Falcom, making opening cinematics for JRPGs such as The Legend of Heroes and Ys. It was here that he started shaping a style that would define him as an artist, and began experimenting with a blend of traditional animation and CGI that he would later go on to perfect. When he wasn't at the office, however, Shinkai was a hobbyist filmmaker and produced several short films that garnered him some early acclaim. But it wasn't until his 2002 feature, Voices of a Distant Star, where fans of anime worldwide began paying attention. Having quit his job to make it almost entirely single-handedly, this 25-minute exploration of long-distance love in a time of spacefaring schoolgirl piloted mecha, landed as a statement of intent from Shinkai. Being a largely solo project, you can see a lot of his future in this fragment of his past. Simply from its scope, you can immediately tell how far this man's vision, drive and passion would take him. Following the success of Voices, Shinkai's star rose, allowing him bigger budgets and an actual team behind him for his follow-up features the place promised in our early days, and 5 centimeters per second. Despite this newfound influx of creative talent, Shinkai's voice has remained an independent and instantly recognizable one. This is thanks, in a large part, to how hands-on he is during the development of his films, extensively storyboarding every scene, obsessively lighting the work of his colleagues and even lending his own voice talents to work in progress cuts giving his voice actors an example of exactly what he wants from them. <laughs> but beyond this, Shinkai's pictures are so clearly his own because he pours so much of himself into each one. He delights in showcasing his own interests in his movies. Rain. Trains. And of course, feet.
But besides these signature, superficial elements, there's a distinct and recognisable weight to the emotion of each movie. A deep through line that starts with Shinkai's ability to conjure a sense of place, a sense of time, and a sense of loneliness. His movies are hideously beautiful at every turn, but there's undoubtedly a coldness to them. Before beginning work on Your Name, Shinkai released the stunning Garden of Words, which felt, until that point, to be a culmination of everything that had come before, to an almost pornographic extreme. But beneath the achingly beautiful exterior, Shinkai doubled down on this sense of not belonging. I've always been here, stuck, stuck in the same place. But there's one constant, present in almost every Shinkai picture, that marries his love for visual motifs and that misanthropic soul. The mobile phone. Because, whilst phones have connected us like never before, there's also something a little lonely about the mobile and our newfound dependence on them. I wonder when I started writing these messages that I never sent. For everything that Shinkai does right, that Shinkai achieves that seems so far ahead of the curve, he has his fair share of shortcomings. Shortcomings that Shinkai himself is not blind to. Indeed, time and time again he appears to be his own harshest critic. As far back as Voices of a Distant Star, these cracks have appeared in that beautiful veneer, flaws that would become as synonymous with Shinkai as his successes. Oftentimes you get the feeling that his projects got away from him, that with each story he struggled to succinctly sell its grand premise. Whilst his vision is one of leisurely beauty, Shinkai often stumbles as a storyteller, tripping over himself to get to the next big melodramatic beat, rather than letting scenes that need to breathe do just that. By his own admission, many of his movies are unfinished or imperfect, but it's in this chase of moments that Shinkai has developed his own pace, one that flows on an emotional level rather than an intellectual one. And even whilst you're telling yourself you shouldn't fall for such cheap thrills, it's impossible not to get swept up in it all. Through a heady mix of breathtaking visuals, snappy editing and an always rousing score interspersed with carefully delivered narrative gut punches, Shinkai makes movies that effortlessly ring enjoyable drama out of each film's fascinating hook. That hook, whether it be body-swapping teenagers, the land of the dead or girls who can control the weather, are all in service of a theme Shinkai has woven through every movie he has made. Separation. Whether by space, by illness, by distance, by age or even by death. This beautiful but heartbreaking motif is omnipresent in his work. It would all be a little dour, perhaps, if Shinkai didn't conveniently provide the antidote as well. Because for all the melancholia of what separates us, these films are ultimately about what connects us. And it's never more apparent, visually or thematically, than in the beautifully presented togetherness of your name. Mitsuha and Taki have begun waking up in each other's bodies. These two teenagers have never met. How could they have? One lives in the center of Tokyo and the other out in the boonies. Taki lives a fast-paced, exciting, stressful life in the city, whilst Mitsuha longs to escape her dull hometown and a life obsessed with tradition. They're both a bit fed up with their lot, and it's this longing for change that is the basis for almost every body swap movie out there. Unhappy, and positive that the grass has got to be greener somewhere, our leads plead with the heavens, and destiny wraps tight around them. 
The most interesting hook about Your Name's otherwise overplayed trope is that it's not a permanent fixture. Taki and Mitsuha will only find themselves piloting each other's bodies every so often, and this back and forth creates an interplay and a relationship between the two of them that the genre rarely enjoys. Watching each of them return to a life lived in rather recklessly by the other, having to pick up the pieces or face the consequences of their errant acts, makes for brilliant, hilarious, and often thought-provoking viewing. They set down rules for each other to follow, in the hopes that the fallout of their body-swapping antics will be minimised. But, of course, these rules are broken throughout, with both Taki and Mitsuha believing they know what's best for the other. Through messages scrawled in diaries, or, when tensions really rise, across their own bodies, they both fight for autonomy, for co-ownership even, of their joint lives. Through simple quarrels, the actual debate of the authorship of their lives blossoms in ever-interesting ways, and the strange dynamic that forms between them quickly becomes the movie's most intoxicating hook until... It isn't. This tie, this inexplicable linking of lives by a thread of fate, is suddenly severed, barely half an hour into the movie, revealing a far more nuanced tale underneath. This gear shift sends the movie scrambling, a little, and it's in this midsection that the pacing of the film reveals those classic flaws Shinkai struggles with. Quick, snappy montages, full to bursting with wonderful moments that arguably deserve entire scenes to themselves, end up doing a lot of the film's narrative heavy lifting in this opening act. Still, it's in service of a much more intriguing journey, one that goes places I really didn't expect it to, and becoming one of Shinkai's tightest works to date in the process, wearing the learnings of his past movies on its sleeve at all times. Revisiting Shinkai's portfolio now, you can glimpse the DNA of your name throughout, in the unparalleled artistry and cinematography of Garden of Words, in the musicality of 5 centimeters per second, in the unrestrained yearning of voices and the melancholia of a place promised, your name was always waiting to be born, Shinkai's portfolio is an evolution, one where each new title builds off the one that came before, and your name feels like punctuation to that lineage. It's easy to slip into hyperbole when talking about something like your name, with its numerous accolades and titles, but what can't be overstated is how transcendental a moment this was to many around the globe. Anyone with a fascination for film checked it out, which might be the reason it's taken me this long to recommend it it almost felt a little redundant to do so. But, as Makoto Shinkai is once again taking Japan by storm with his new movie, Weathering With You, I felt it apt to return to the work that truly put his name on everybody's lips, to properly pay homage to a film that bridged a gap in film, that pulled in disparate audiences, and, just for a moment, brought us all a little closer together. As always, thanks for watching. Your Name is an easy film to talk about because it's just such a fun one, and if you've somehow missed out on it, I really do recommend you check it out. Making this video has given me time to rewatch all of Neon Genesis Evangelion in preparation for my next piece, one that's been coming for a while. That said, it still might take a little longer than usual to create a proper tribute to Hideaki Anno's masterpiece, so I hope you'll be patient with me in the meantime. You can check out my Patreon for updates and exclusives in the interim, or subscribe here on YouTube to be notified when it lands. If, instead, you'd like to see me give up this YouTube game to make and sell my own Kuchi Kamizake, or Spitzake, hit the like button and I'll go buy some rice. <laughs>